y'all what's up welcome back to the vlog it's valerie y'all it is sunday it is like five o'clock on a sunday and i'm coming here because i need to get this vlog in y'all i know i miss friday's vlog um because i try to upload mondays wednesdays fridays and sundays but i did miss sunday's vlog y'all i have been lightweight getting lit all week like i've been going to work coming home getting lit and i'm still lit like i got like a slight hangover so i'm drinking water or whatever but i did not get up the vlog last sunday recapping um power or what is it um power book two ghost so let's just um y'all know i'll be taking notes or whatever let's go over last sunday what happened and then we could just recap we can recap episode two we can talk about episode two because you know this is tv for adults so adults be watching power so yeah y'all basically it's self-care sunday over here like i'm getting over a hangover i just if y'all watch my stories y'all know i had got a lace front put on and like i don't know if it was latex in the glue well i do know it there was no latex in the glue but there was something in the glue that was causing my whole forehead to be inflamed like it just really just flared up which is similar to what happens when i put on lashes with um when i use lash lash adhesive with latex in it it causes my eye to like really swell so i have like an allergy to latex but there was no latex in the glue i don't know what it was but it just took me forever to get that lace front off because you know they be trying to keep that thing glued honey but i had to take that john off because no okay but um let's get right into the recap okay so on episode two um paula Let's talk about Paula Davis, um, McLean's investigator. How do y'all feel about Paula? Like, we gonna talk about episode two and three right now. So even in episode two and three, her stance on Tasha's situation is still the same. She really does not care for the whole case at all. Like, she like, throw the whole case away. Throw her away, throw her son away, throw it all away. How do y'all feel about her, like... Is that how she is that gonna be her attitude the whole season? You know, I want to see more from her because Davis, the way that he uses her, it seems like that she has a lot of substance that she can give a lot of insight into the case, and she's a instrumental part of this whole situation. But then again, it doesn't seem like she is because. If she was such a good investigator, wouldn't she know by now? Excuse me, don't come in here, friend. Royalty, go watch your show. Y'all see how she just busted my door open right there? But do y'all um feel like she would have... um Hold on for a second, because she got to get out. Because mama can't do it today. Uh-uh. Royalty. Bye-bye. Okay, so I feel like she should know a little bit more into the whole situation with sex, especially by episode three. Because in episode two, I remember Davis, um, I, I wrote down that Davis is correct about why they are charging um, Tasha. When he says that it's not about what they're charging her, it's about why they're charging her. Davis is correct about that. So I feel like if he already told uh paula this then paula's on payroll paula need to be figuring out the why then and she ain't figured it out yet but she did figure out that you know in episode three she did come through with that information that um what what was that lady's name i forgot her name i can't even remember her name but um the lady dang i forgot her name y'all know who i'm talking about the one that came and cross-examined tasha in episode three she did figure out that, um, so yeah, Paula did figure out that she was uh, representing um, Sax 
and she did give that information, but I feel like she should know more. Like, come on now. Okay, so moving on. Um, y'all, do y'all think that Tyreek should have told Davis um, that <clears throat> what Sax's motivation was when Davis asked him? I feel like him withholding that information um, it was not a good idea, you know what I'm saying? Like, him and Tasha are holding that information that Sax was actually at the crime scene and that Sax was seen standing over a uh, ghost with the gun. But, you know, they didn't tell. So, I don't know when that information is going to come out. But, I don't know. I feel like Tariq should have let that out the bag, especially after he's seen Sax already betray him and his mom. Like, why you ain't just say, well, as you know what? It was actually, it could have actually been sex, but we're going to see why. We're going to see as the story unfolds, we shall see. But um, then Brayden. So in, in episode two, when Brayden was like, come on, Tariq, I know you got something going on. I remember uh, I, what I wrote down was should Brayden, uh, should Tariq take the help that Brayden is offering? Um, and if he does take the help, when will he take the help? So as it turns out, he go ahead Tariq goes ahead and takes the help in episode three, which I already knew that Tariq was going to take Brayden's help because Tariq is pretty resourceful. He does use the people and things around him in order to maneuver through this whole situation. So I was not surprised that, um, especially after that whole incident at the, um, the frat house with uh, Brayden and his brother, I was not surprised that Tariq was going to... Um, enlist the services of Brayden and use them to his advantage and that's exactly what happened and Brayden seems to be like a real genuine friend you know what I'm saying like Brayden seems like he's going to be somebody that even after if the show continues Brayden's making himself out to be someone that will be a lifelong friend to Tariq he's a cool down-to-earth white guy and I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling Brayden. Brayden be with the shits, you know what I'm saying? He had Therese back during the visual that um, Dr. McCl M Millens or Professor Mill Millens had put together and everything. Like, I was like, okay, I like Brayden. I've always liked Brayden. Brayden always been with it. But y'all, when Zeke was smiling in Professor Milgram's face, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Yo, he is really playing that part where he was like, tell me some more about you, though. Like, I was like, if y'all get your goofy young ass out of here. Like, ladies, how do y'all feel about him? Like, I would definitely have no sexual relations with that dude. Like, I really... He's just a tall, goofy dummy. Like, he's there's no sexual attraction there. Like, he thinks he's cute. It's, it's hilarious, y'all. But moving on, so... Simon tells Tariq that he's just like ghosts. And um, when Simon says that moral code is... Um, <clears throat> what did he say? He said something about broke people let moral code uh, overrule their ambitions. And I was like, you know what? That is something that Simon would say. Like, on my first recap... Of the first episode when I was trying to discuss Simon when Simon said that I was like that just that describes him perfectly like Simon really believes that he's a real ambitious guy y'all even Tate with Tate being in episode two I was like what the heck is Tate doing here like he's a he is a Dre all day y'all remember Dre and how Dre was just trying to get in where he fit in didn't care who he betrayed Simon is kind of, Simon's got a little bit of a moral code than I think Dre has, you know, but I, I really like Simon's character, like, Simon is, a, he plays a real instrumental part in the show, you know, so, now y'all, Sax is gonna go down, and I know for sure, because he hired Garza to be the lead investigator on uh, the case, so, Especially after he knew that Garza has a past with Davis. I was like, you know, when you be trying to do that get back, that tap for tap, 
and go try to get somebody through that strategy, that's when you know that you're going down. So I was like, yeah, um, sex is going down. Like his family already said he was going down. He or she, whatever he is, is going down and sex is going down. But y'all, what, what do y'all feel? When, when, did, when is sex going to go down? He ain't go down to episode three. We ain't even see him that much in episode three, y'all. So episode four, I'm not sure. I'm gonna give it to episode five. I'm gonna say episode five, y'all. Sex is going down, period. Okay. So, um, y'all, does Carrie have a sex addiction? Is that is that what she was talking to her friend about, Professor Milgram? Does she have a sex addiction? Because that sex scene that she had was weak as fuck. Like I'm just gonna say it, like. Angela and Ghost had the best sex scenes. Like they was getting it in. Like they 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 aroused something in me. That sex scene between Professor Milgram and Buddy was just weak. I was just like ready for it to be over. Um so hmm. what was I saying here? So, yeah, um, let's talk about Drew. How do y'all feel about Drew? So, in the first episode, when we seen Drew, he was very quiet. Like, Drew is somebody that studies people. That's what I feel like. He's somebody that studies. He's a calm. He's a quiet storm. That's what Drew is to me. That's the feeling that I'm getting. And, you know, I feel like he's very underestimated. And, you know, in the first episode, I seen him side-eyeing Tariq. Like, who is this guy? So then in episode two, he was trying to get to know Tariq. You know, when Tariq came over for dinner, he was asking Tariq questions about his schooling and things like that. Because that Mo Monet is raising these adults. Like, these are adults. These are her adult children. But it's like she's not letting them be adults. And Kane is okay with that. Kane's a straight mommy's boy. You know, he's still acting out. He's still very... It's erratic with his um, responses to things and he 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 be waiting on the go ahead from his mom and he listening to everything that his mom says versus Drew I feel like Drew is trying to find out who he is so is Diana Diana wants to find out who she is outside of her mom and her family but Monet is like really I'm in charge, you know, she's got that attitude, like, at first, the first two episodes, I was liking Monet, but this third episode, I was kind of like, girl, like, chill, like, these are adults, like, I know they're your children, but they're adults, and you're not about to just, you need to have some more children if you need to be this controlling, because this is not gonna work, but when Uncle, um, yeah, Uncle Frank's role was short-lived, which is fine with me, because he was a straight pedophile, okay, but um yeah, I put Kane Kane is weak minded and easy easily manipulated, which I noticed after that talk with Tariq. So um that's my stance on Kane. I feel like he's weak minded and easily manipulated. Um and we shall see as the season goes on. Um Yeah, so I don't know what Tate's motive is now that Ghost is dead. I'm pretty sure he wants to further his political career. And I'm just not sure how him being in the picture is going to help him further his political career. But um, what do y'all think Uncle Gabe, like when Tariq gave the eulogy, which I'm glad that he did go with the more, um, what do I want to say? A more um, <laughs> diplomatic approach, okay? So he didn't say anything too positive or too negative i mean he he kind of kept a straight line i do i kind of disagree with his eulogy though he's like i'm the manifestation of what my dad could never be actually Tariq, you're a total fuck up and you're the reason why we're here right now okay you got Raina killed you got your mama put in jail you killed your dad i mean between him and ghosts you're exactly like your dad like come on now but I am, I live for a good show, you know what I'm saying? I want them to show me something. I'm here for it. So I'm rooting for Tariq at the end of the day, okay? But, um, yeah. Um, what else? Blanca Rodriguez has some information on sex. And I think she's going to be an instrumental part in Tasha's case. When it comes up, because she 
she knows that Tasha's got some type of guilt, but she, um, Blanca Rodriguez, the investigator, does not like sex, and I feel like she's going to help McClain, which she did say she was going to help Davis. So Davis got her in the pocket, and then, um, oh, I was talking about Monet being mean to that cop. After he bought her a whole blue label, I'm like, girl, he didn't bought you a $200 bottle of whiskey. You better chill, sis. Open you that, but open up that bottle and take a sip and chill. Like, quit being so mean to him because, especially after he's trying to do so much for you, you can't be that mean to that man. Like, that man is gonna turn on you. You can't just keep on dogging him out the way you dogging him out. Like, treating him like shit. Like, Monet treats everybody like shit. Like, y'all notice that? Like, I don't know why I was liking her for the first two episodes. Like, after the first two episodes, I noticed I'm noticing she's just treating everybody like they ain't shit. Like, she's just being a nasty bitch. She being so bitter, and it's just like, why? But y'all, let's get into episode three. So, at episode three, when Kane and Drew was going around to collect that money, I was like, okay, you know, you got to see that Drew, uh, Kane is the is the strong arm, and Drew is the, you know, he's the nice one. Nice guy, good guy, bad guy. So, that's how they've got it set up. And then, um, y'all... What is Lauren, and, and in the next scene, you see that Lauren is trying to talk to Tariq because she's trying to help him with school, but what is going to be her ultimate role in this season? Because Tariq's clearly not listening to her. And then when he did kind of listen to her, he ends up getting a, a no credit on his paper, y'all. I was like, dang, the professor didn't give him any credit, but I feel the professor. I feel like the professor is trying to teach him a a life lesson like i i really needed to hear that what the professor has said because when he said that people are going to like you or dislike you no matter what you do and you need to stick true to yourself i felt that and i was like you know that's the same thing for me and youtube like i have to stick to who i am and when i make my videos because people there's going to be people that love me and there's going to be people that that just hate me and that's just that's what it is about life and you just have to at the end of the day like the professor said be you do you boo <laughs> okay so i wasn't even mad that he got that um no credit i was like yeah that and then the professor would not budge on giving him a second chance or anything and I was like yeah that's a life lesson that hopefully you just picked up and you learned right then and there especially leading the life that you're trying to lead but y'all Zeke is retarded I swear like I just wrote that down Zeke is retarded I don't know what he did in the show but I <laughs> I jotted that down like Zeke is retarded I swear to God I think I put that he was retarded when he uh oh because Tariq was like bro this is what you've been doing all day when he ain't write his own paper and he was like, yeah, man, I've been busy. I was like, this nigga's retarded. But y'all, when Tasha got that makeover to go to court, Lord knows I felt that. Did y'all feel that? I felt that in my soul. Like, I, I sat there and I was her at that time. We were one. I was like, we need this, sis. Make me over. I want to be made over. <laughs> ah! Yes, y'all. I was like, yes. But, um... Tasha retelling the story of holding the gun reminds me of how James was is a fuckboy and it just makes me not have any pity for him that he's dead like sometimes I do feel for him and then after she told that story I was just like yeah okay he he was a fuckboy you know he cheated on her just because he had on a suit and he had you know had a good talk doesn't take away from the fact that he really wasn't the best person like he he cheated on her with two different women after he left angela he started cheating on her with another woman it was just like too much it was too much and i was like y'all this is really a ghetto ass hood novel show that we watching like if y'all didn't know it before you better know it now but i mean it's some good adult tv like if y'all sitting at home watching reruns of moesha you need to grow the fuck up like that's not what we doing. We watching Power. We watching um, Insecure. Okay. We watching Woke on Hulu. Okay. We grown. <laughs> I feel like I need another glass of wine. Like, period. But, um, yeah, y'all. Um, and Tyreek is following in his footsteps. Tyreek is just a, he's fuckboy junior. 
but I feel like everyone is um, underestimating Drew. And if Monet and Kane gave him the chance to uh, prove himself, then um, he will really come through. And I, I feel like he is the best choice, like his father said. Um, like Lorenzo said, that Drew is the choice. I feel like he is the best choice because at least he has his emotions under control. You know, he's not quick with the trigger hand. But what do you think the real reason is that um, Monet would not like let Diana go to school? I'm curious about that. Like, why? Would, what is her deal with not letting that girl go to school? Like, and treating her like a child, going through her stuff, and you know, and Diana, I feel like she's searching for her place in the family too because she was so happy to bring that little information she got from Tariq back to Monet. She was like, yo, um, I know something that you don't know. And you know, her mom was like, good, good job. So her mom is trying to train her maybe to take her spot. Maybe the mom wants for the daughter to be the heiress of the family to take over, you know? But I don't know. I feel like Diane is not built for that. I feel like Drew is. Drew's got that mysticism about him. Like, I really like Drew. There's something about Drew that I really like. But um, how do y'all feel about Tariq working with the Tejadas? I feel like he just opened up a can of worms that he has knows nothing about. He's going down the same path that his father went down. You know, his father was, got into this life to for whatever reason and then had a hard time getting out when he felt like he had satisfied the reasons for his uh for him getting into this lifestyle and um he he never managed to get out but when Tariq tells his mom like hey I think that I got an alternative you know when Uncle Gabe said that you either die or go to jail from living this lifestyle I think I got an alternative what is the alternative y'all what do y'all think it is especially now that he didn't got in bed with the Tejadas because he was going to die if he couldn't do that. He was trying to get meet up with Monet or talk to uh, Diana. He was going to get into that either way it went. So what do y'all feel like? I, I don't, I can't call it right now. You know, I just watched the show. I'm just doing this recap real quick. But um, after I have some more time to think about it, I'm probably going to rewatch it and see if I missed any little nuances, you know what I'm saying? Any little side eyes or anything, telltales. But um, I don't know, y'all. I really don't know. But this is turning out to be some good TV, and I'm here for it. And yeah, y'all, it's been real. Um, I'm excited to be here with y'all on another Sunday. Did I say happy Sunday, y'all? Happy Sunday. <laughs> uh, I pray that this week serves you well. And um, yeah, it's been real. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. And I will see y'all when I see y'all. Peace.